Anu was the first god known to humanity, according to the oldest records in history. He was the supreme god of the sky in Sumerian mythology, considered the most powerful and exalted among all deities. His name, which means sky in Sumerian and Akkadian, reflects his absolute dominion over the celestial heights. Anu was seen as the father of all gods, the source of authority and legitimacy for kings and cities. He was not a god who involved himself in the daily affairs of humans. His role was more transcendental, maintaining universal order from his throne in heaven. In the beginning, according to Sumerian myths, there was a primordial abyss called Namu, the infinite and formless sea. From this abyss arose a cosmic mountain that represented the universe, divided into two parts, the sky and the earth, still united. Anu emerged as the personification of the sky, while Kai, also known as Antu in Akkadian mythology, represented the earth. Together, Anu and Ki formed the primordial couple from whose union the other gods were born. This union symbolized the fundamental balance between heaven and earth, essential for the order of the cosmos. From the union of Anu and Ki were born the Anunnaki, a group of deities who ruled various aspects of the natural and social world. Among their most prominent children were Enlil, the god of air and atmosphere, Enki, the god of fresh water, wisdom, and magic, and Ninhursag, the goddess of the earth and fertility. These gods would play crucial roles in Mesopotamian mythology and in the lives of people, interacting more directly with humanity. One of the most significant events in Sumerian myths is the separation of heaven and earth. Enlil, son of Anu and Ki, was the one who performed this transcendental act. He separated Anu, sky, and Ki, earth, to create space where life could thrive. Anu remained in heaven, ruling from the heights, while Enlil took control of the earth and atmosphere. This act marked the beginning of the structure of the universe as conceived by the Sumerians and established the respective domains of the main deities. Anu, although a distant figure, was essential in the balance of the world. Sumerian kings considered themselves chosen by Anu and received their legitimacy through him. Temples dedicated to Anu were centers of power and religion, where priests performed rituals to maintain his favor. One of the most famous temples was the Iana, located in the city of Uruk, which was also dedicated to the goddess Inanna, granddaughter of Anu, and one of the most revered deities in Mesopotamia. In the story of the myth of Atrahasis, Anu plays a crucial role in the creation of humanity and in the events leading up to the Great Flood. The lesser gods, known as Igigi, were overwhelmed by the work of maintaining the world. Tired of their tasks, they rebelled against the older gods. Enki proposed creating human beings to take the place of the Igigi in labor. Anu, as supreme god, approved this plan, and thus humanity was created from the mixture of clay and the blood of a sacrificed god. However, over time, Humans multiplied and their noise disturbed the peace of the gods. Enlil decided to send a flood to annihilate them. Enki, compassionate towards humanity, warned Atrahasis, instructing him to build an ark and save himself along with his family and animals. Although Anu does not directly intervene in this decision, his position is fundamental in the dynamics between gods and humans. In another significant myth, that of the demonic bird Anzu, Anu plays an important role in resolving the conflict. Anzu, 
a mythological being with characteristics of an eagle and a lion, stole the Tablets of Destiny from Enlil, destabilizing the order of the universe. These tablets granted power and control over the universe to whoever possessed them. The gods, alarmed by this situation, gathered in council. Anu summoned the gods and sought a champion who could face Anzu and recover the tablets. None of the lesser gods dared to face the mighty Anzu until Ninurta, son of Inlil, accepted the mission. With the support and weapons provided by Anu and the other gods, Ninurta managed to defeat Anzu and restore order. This myth shows how Anu, although not actively participating in combat, is the point of reference and supreme authority in times of crisis. His role as convener of the Council of Gods and provider of support is essential to maintain universal balance. The lesser gods respected his judgment and followed his decisions, reaffirming his position as the supreme god. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, although Anu is not one of the main characters, his influence is notable. When Gilgamesh and Enkidu kill the Bull of Heaven, sent by the goddess Inanna as punishment, Anu is consulted about the consequences of this act. Inanna, offended by Gilgamesh's insolence, asks Anu to punish the heroes. Anu grants her request, which results in the death of Enkidu. This event marks a crucial point in the epic, leading Gilgamesh to reflect on mortality and embark on his quest for immortality. Another story where Anu participates is in the myth of Inanna's descent to the underworld. Inanna, goddess of love and war, decides to visit the realm of her sister Ereshki Gal, the goddess of the underworld. Before leaving, Inanna prepares herself with the seven Mi and receives advice from Anu and Enki. Although Anu does not directly intervene in her journey, his support gave Inanna the authority and protection to undertake her dangerous journey. During her stay in the underworld, Inanna is held and dies, which causes an imbalance in the world. The gods, worried, seek a solution. Enki finally manages to rescue her, but Anu, as the supreme god, was aware of the events and his approval was essential to resolve the situation. In the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian epic poem of creation, Anu appears in an important position. Although the poem focuses on Marduk, the patron god of Babylon, Anu is the one who grants Marduk the four winds and the weapons necessary to confront Tiamat, the goddess of chaos. Anu recognizes Marduk's courage and power, giving him authority so that he can restore order in the universe. This act represents a transfer of power to a new generation of gods, but Anu remains a revered and respected figure. In Akkadian mythology, Anu is also mentioned in stories about the creation and order of the world. Although his role may vary in different texts, his position as supreme god of heaven is constant. His authority is recognized by all deities, and his approval is sought in important decisions that affect the universe and humanity. Anu, in addition to being the father of Enlil and Enki, is also the father of other important gods, such as Adad, the god of the storm, and Nana, the god of the moon. His offspring encompasses a wide range of deities that control various aspects of nature and society. This extensive divine family shows the influence and reach of Anu in Mesopotamian mythology. In hymns and religious texts, Anu is mentioned as the king of heaven and source of all power. Priests and scribes invoked his name in rituals and prayers, seeking his favor and protection. His figure was central to Mesopotamian cosmology, 
and his cult was associated with the legitimacy and continuity of institutions. Kings claimed to receive their authority directly from Anu, which reinforced their position before the people. Although Anu did not have such a popular cult among ordinary people as other gods closer to daily concerns, his importance was indisputable. His image was less represented in art and sculptures due to his transcendental and elevated nature. However, his symbol, often a horned crown or an empty throne, appeared on cylinder seals and other objects, reminding devotees of his presence and role as sovereign of heaven. Over time, the cult of Anu began to decline in favor of other deities more active in myths and everyday life. Gods like Marduk in Babylon and Ashur in Assyria gained prominence, reflecting political and cultural changes in the region. However, Anu was never forgotten. His name and essence as god of the sky continued to be revered. In many traditions, he was considered the ancestor of the gods, a patriarchal figure who, although distant, remained fundamental in the divine structure. In the realm of magic and enchantments, Anu was invoked to protect against evil forces. It was believed that his authority could subdue dangerous beings that threatened humans. Amulets and talismans often carried inscriptions that appealed to Anu and other gods to provide safety and well-being. His role as protector, although indirect, was recognized in ritual and magical practices. The influence of Anu extended beyond Sumer and Akkad. In Hurrian and Hittite mythology, Anu was adopted while maintaining his role as a celestial deity. His figure left a mark on other cultures and mythologies in the region, reflecting his importance in the collective imagination of the ancient civilizations of the Near East. Anu is also related to celestial bodies. He is associated with the North Star or the constellation Orion, symbolizing his high position in the sky. Mesopotamian astronomers and priests studied the movements of the stars and planets seeing in them signs of the gods and destiny. As god of the sky, Anu was the personification of this celestial sphere that influenced life on Earth. In the myth of Era, an Assyrian-Babylonian text, Anu appears again. Era, the god of war and pestilence, plans to destroy humanity. Anu, aware of the danger, warns other gods about Era's intentions. Although Anu does not intervene directly to stop him, his knowledge and wisdom are fundamental to the plot. This story shows how Anu, despite being a distant figure, continues to have an essential role in maintaining order and monitoring the actions of other gods. The evolution of Anu reflects the changes in Mesopotamian society and religion, from the first Sumerian cities to the Babylonian and Assyrian empires. His permanence in the collective memory demonstrates the importance he had in the worldview of ancient peoples. Anu went from being an active deity in myths to becoming a more abstract and symbolic figure representing supreme authority and universal order. In the texts of the Sumerian King List, a document that records the reigns of the Sumerian kings, it is mentioned that the kingdom descended from heaven, a clear reference to Anu. This shows how his influence permeated even political legitimation and the power structure of city-states. Anu also had relationships with other important deities, such as Damkina, mother of Marduk, and Uras, another of his consorts in some texts. These family connections expand his influence and show the complexity of the Mesopotamian pantheon, where relationships between gods reflected social and natural aspects. 
In the cities of Uruk and Der, Anu had important temples where festivals and ceremonies were held in his honor. These religious centers were places of pilgrimage and spiritual activity, strengthening the link between society and celestial deities. Although Anu was not frequently depicted in art, some inscriptions and reliefs show a god with a horned tiara and royal garments, symbolizing his status and power. These representations, although scarce, provide an idea of how the ancients imagined their supreme god. Thank you for watching this video about Anu, the supreme god of the sky in Sumerian mythology. We hope this journey through his history and myths has been informative and enriching. Until next time.